Hey guys, uh, good to see you today. I didn't make a video yesterday. That's the first time in the like month and a week or month and a half since I started this YouTube channel that I didn't make a video. Uh, there wasn't that much amazing news to report on and I did kind of need a day off, but I have been enjoying these videos and thank you everybody who's hit the like and subscribe buttons uh, on my videos and watched them, commented and all of that. I've been really uh, surprised and happy with uh, how many views and, and uh, subscribers I've got so quickly when I just started up this little hobby. Anyway, um, I've been following the big Navi stuff pretty closely, and while there wasn't too much to report on yesterday, suddenly we're getting a lot more information today. So the biggest, uh, most interesting piece of information for me is a leaked benchmark that's an actual gaming benchmark from Ashes of the Singularity. Um, so we have the, uh, wait a minute, is that actually a game? I'm, you know what I mean? I'm going to be honest here, guys. I don't do the Ashes of the Singularity benchmark. Is that based on an actual game? <laughs> I don't know. The point is, it's a benchmark. It gives you comparisons between the cards, and we have a leak here. So it seems to be running on a Core i7-8700K at 32 gigabytes of RAM, and by it, I mean an RX 6800 XT. So this is not the 6800, this is not the 6900 XT, this is the 6800 XT. And we are seeing results on the Ashes of the Singularity benchmarking website. I found this at videocards.com, and I will always link any sources in my description to the video. Okay, so what do we see? Well, we see a score of 10,100, and that's not super useful information unless you're using this benchmark all the time, unless you compare it with other, um, other cards. So let's hop right into that. So remember the 6800 XT is designed to be AMD's competitor to the 3080. The 3080, costing $700 if you can actually get one and get one at MSRP, whereas the um, 6800 XT should be coming in at $50 less than that at $650, again, if you can actually get one and get one at MSRP. So uh, when we look at them, we're hoping that they're comparing pretty closely here. So if we see a RTX 3070 running on the same kind of GPU, a 3080 running, uh, sorry, uh, on the same kind of CPU, the 3080 and the 3090 also running on those. We're seeing um, the 3080, the 3090, and the 6800 XT giving very, very close results to each other. Now we do see some scores from the 3090 and uh, 3080 that are a few frames per second higher, giving a bit of a higher score, um, but we're definitely outclassing the 3070, and we certainly should for a $150 premium over that card. Um, by the way, I'm fairly certain this benchmark does not include ray tracing or anything like that. For anybody interested in ray tracing, if you look back a couple of days on my channel, you will see me summarizing the leaked information we have so far about ray tracing. It's not a lot, but we do have at least some guide for what we might expect. Now, this is at 1080p resolution. Let's jump over to 4K because we did also get some 4K results here. So at 4K, uh, we see the 6800 XT actually on top of the pack. But again, the 3080, 3090, and 6800 XT are all, um, we've got a two frame per second gap between the 6800 and the 3090. So I would class this as basically equal performance, although technically it is coming out ahead. Um, and ahead, all three cards are well ahead of the 3070. So at least in this particular benchmark, it does appear that the 6800 XT is on par with the 3080 and 3090 levels of performance. Now notice that in this benchmark, the 3090 is performing on par with the 3080 and not showing that headroom there. So different benchmarks show different types of results. And so let's, let's think about what this means in the bigger picture. Well, first of all, there's no information here on if this is overclocked, and we should keep that in mind, because for all we know, this is an overclocked 6800 XT, and at stock, maybe it would fall behind these. We don't know that, so keep that in mind with leaks. Don't read more into them than you should. Second of all, this is one particular test. We know, given the AMD released benchmarks, again, 
could be cherry picked, but probably not completely out of the realm of reality because that would be bad publicity for them. We do know that the 6800 XT should be beating the 3080 in some games and losing to the 3080 in others. Now, important things to note from those released benchmarks by AMD is that uh, when they're comparing some of their cards, they have the smart access memory turned on. And if you wanna know more about that, look back in, again in my channel and including the fact that Nvidia does claim that they will be developing a software update to their Ampere cards to do something like smart access memory um, and that there's no release date for that. So apparently that's in the works and will happen probably if you believe Nvidia, but AMD will have that ready on launch if you have the correct parts. Again, that's not the point of this video, keep that in mind. Um, but uh, if I'm remembering correctly, the slides that they released for the 6800 XT versus the 3080 did not say that it was using smart access memory or rage mode, whereas the 6800 was using smart access memory when they compared it to the 2080 Ti, and the 6900 XT was using smart access memory and rage mode when they compared it to the 60 uh, to the 3090. So. Um, it's seeming like the 6800 XT, assuming that this wasn't overclocked, really can compete with the 3080, at least in this benchmark, as well as the ones that AMD was giving us, winning in some games, losing in others. And so it's looking like this is confirming that that's the performance level to expect, and it's $50 cheaper. It also comes in at 20 watts less on its power requirements, which might lead to nice overclocking results. And we have seen leaks showing uh, these, these 6000 series cards overclocking to crazy speeds like 2.5 gigahertz. But again, we don't know all the details on how that was done and if that'll be a common thing that you could do or something that you could sustain uh, for a, 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 an extended period of time, which I would have my doubts about unless you had some like amazing golden sample or something. Okay, so uh, I think that's all we can get out of these particular benchmarks, but you might want to be thinking about, should you, are you going to be able to get a full review before launch? And launch is the 18th. Today's the 16th if you're watching this video when I'm filming it. So keep, uh, let me jump over here. So we've got some more information. So from Hardware Unboxed, uh, that's a YouTube channel that many of you are probably already watching. <laughs> if you found mine, you're probably watching the major tech channels too. Um, anyway, so talking about availability and um, release date and things like that, as, as well as when will reviews launch. So one thing is, uh, Hardware Unboxed is saying that they called Australian retailers and asked about supply. So what kind of supply should you expect at launch? And it sounded bad, like 3080 levels of bad. That's disappointing, I know. A lot of people were hoping for better supply. Now again, that was Australian retailers, so it's possible that other regions will do better. He was focusing on Australian retailers, but still, that's a bad sign. Second of all, um, he's mentioning that, the, um, that their review, that's when we're gonna see our review is the 18th. So the 18th is when we will see the hardware unboxed review, which I'm pretty certain would mean that that's when the review embargo lifts. Well, the 18th is when the cards go on sale. So if you wanna wait and see a third party review, you're gonna to have to wait until after the cards have already sold out. But that might not be a bad thing because the AIB cards, the board partner cards, which will probably have better coolers and might have better overclocking headroom with that in mind, uh, are coming out on the 25th, according to Hardware Unboxed. And that's good news to me because that means that if you just don't buy one on the 18th, don't buy a reference card on the 18th, which sounds like getting one would be crazy difficult anyway, then on the 18th, instead of buying one, just watch all the reviews. And I'll try to do some kind of a review summary um, on here where I give my thoughts on other people's reviews. To be clear, I, uh, this, my YouTube channel's brand new. I don't get sent review samples yet, okay? Um, anyway, uh, but I will look at other people's reviews and give my thoughts on this, but that's what we'll get on the 18th. You can try to buy one if you want and maybe return it if it doesn't meet your expectations. But personally, I'd wait till the 25th when we get a board partner card and we'll already have the reviews available to decide if it's actually going to meet your specifications. So that is my take on all of that. 
Now, the last little bit of information on this topic that I'd like to talk about is the pricing, because there was a really interesting uh, pricing thing that happened here, which is that on Computer Salg, which, um, yeah, I don't shop there on a regular basis, guys, um, we had some interesting listings. So notice that there's a listing for a 6800 OC. So this is a board partner card, a 6800 OC, and that it listed for this price. And I'm not familiar with this currency and I'm not gonna do any conversions because I don't really care what the price is. What I care about is the same site listing a 3070 board partner card for more meaning that at least on this particular site, on these particular listings, it's looking like a 3070 could cost more than a 6800. Now that's interesting because the 6800 MSRP should be, if we're talking in dollars and not this, uh, the 6800 should be $579 and the 3070 should be $499. So it's very interesting to see that a card which should have a 16% premium over the 3070 and theoretically should outperform the 3070 um, is being priced lower than a 3070, at least these particular models on this particular retailer. And again, this is before the card's even really available. And so I don't know if this will be typical, but it is very interesting. All right, guys, I've got to teach my next class. Uh, if you made it to the end of this video, you could probably hit the like button. Think about subscribing to the channel if you haven't yet. Thank you, everybody who already has. If you're interested in more of my thoughts on all of these cards, more leaks, talking about ray tracing, things like that, uh, you could look back on my channel over the last couple of weeks and find a lot of related content. Thank you, and I hope you guys have an excellent day.